Hey friends, today I'm gardening with Creekside. I am excited. Let's talk flowers and more specifically, we're going to talk about dahlias because today it's out for delivery. So the tracking says I have a nice size healthy order of beautiful dahlia tubers coming from Swan Island dahlias. So excited about this. So I thought this would be a perfect time to give you an update on, um, the dahlia bed, the dahlia garden, and just kind of all fun things dahlias. Then as soon as it arrives, we're going to do kind of an unboxing and I'm going to show you what dahlias I ordered. And it's, um, it's a hard decision when you're ordering dahlias, that is for sure. Obviously here we are on the back patio because we're going to make our way over to the dahlias, but I just, of course, talking about flowers, I had to give you an update on, um, how everything is looking here as we go to the dahlia garden look at these tulips these are the tulips this is the carnival blend from color blends and the yellow ones started opening up first then we have kind of i don't know what you would call that color it's not orange it's not pink it's more kind of a it has yellow in it, little apricot color. They are opening up. Obviously, it is a nice, cool morning here. And so they are nice and tight. And then this is the first pink one. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So excited. Love how they came out. Um, now, and they're not even in full bloom. So I cannot wait until they are in full bloom. Tulips for us in North Carolina are an annual because our winters do not get cold enough will be a beautiful uh, rebloomer year after year is uh, daffodils. Daffodils, specifically jonquillas, that kind variety of daffodils. This is yellow sailboat and they are just so happy and cheery. Nice little tiny uh, daffodil blooms and I planted them in nice big clumps and you can see them all around the fountain and look Yesterday I got the fountain up. It is going. I'm dealing with some uh, leaf debris in there, so it's not quite as bubbly as it should be. But look at all the yellow sailboats coming up through here. And then I planted also a white uh, jonquil. This is leek, and obviously they're going to be a later bloomer. This is my first little bud coming up right here. Uh, but look at that. It's going to have like a little bit of a yellow center and it will be really pretty with the yellow sailboat. <laughs> Lots of things happening on over here. Brenna is loving, love. <laughs> Can y'all see that? This dog is a mess, y'all. Anyway, she clearly loves being outside. She is a garden dog for sure. So she is loving life. We're gonna pop on over to the dahlia beds because I'm gonna show you um, what they look like, what their current state is, and we're gonna talk about our plans for expanding the cut flower garden. All right, so here we are at the cut flower garden, the dahlia garden. Last year was the very first year I have ever grown dahlias. I blame this solely on Laura. It is all of her fault that I got hooked onto dahlias. When we went to go visit her and Erin, she and Erin, uh, it would have been over a year and a half ago now. Of course, it was in like September, I believe, and her dahlias were beyond gorgeous fell madly in love then she was sweet enough to send me a whole box full of her dahlia tubers last spring i got them in the ground and I, I need to go back and check that date when the video ran but it was may like it was hot when i planted them and honestly it was it was late it was like probably too late to plant them so they took a long time to uh, grow and develop. They did flower, not as full as I think they probably will this year, um, but I still got beautiful blooms on them. And people kept asking me, oh, we want an update on the Dahlia Garden. How's it going? And honestly, I just didn't want to show you because it was kind of sad and pathetic because, uh, you know, life gets away from you and I did not maintain the garden as I probably should have. And we were just a bit on the struggle bus back here and it wasn't real pretty. The blooms themselves were gorgeous, but as an overall garden itself, wasn't highly attractive. Uh, so this year we have plans to make it better so that I can keep you updated on how things are going. And of course, the first time you ever grow a new plant, there is that learning curve, right? So you have to figure out what's going on. So for those of you that just kind of want an overview of this space, 
basically what we did is we came in here and there are three rows you can see we left the stakes up this um, winter and it, and yeah so the stakes are up and the strings are up and they are doing just fine now I love that Swan Island gives you lots of good growing advice for how to do dahlias. And one thing with dahlias is that you cannot use any kind of pre-emergent for weed control. Um, so what they say is if a weed won't grow in your garden, neither will the dahlia. But if weeds grow, then your dahlias will grow. So in my case right now, I'm like, hallelujah, because, <laughs> weeds clearly love these spaces jackson and i were in here yesterday and so he took the weed eater on this side because there's no dahlia tubers on this side and then i was hand weeding obviously i have not done this one yet uh yeah so i have got hen bit chickweed uh dandelions all sorts of things so you can see how far i did get so i made it down about halfway before tracy came so we had to we had to kind of abort the mission, but we got all of this one done as well. And you can see that we do have drip tubing on these flower beds. Now, is it perfectly weeded right now? No, it's not. We will handle that. Um, but we are going to get all of the weeds out. The drip tubing does really well. I believe the emitters are like every 12 inches. And so it is hooked up to a timer. We can get it going, set it on a timer, and I can run it really however long or how often I want. So that is really nice. We are North Carolina. We are zone 7B. Our tippet, like on paper, we don't have to dig up dahlia tubers because our winters do not get cold enough for those long periods of time. So I do not have to dig them up. However, we do have thick clay soil and this right here is especially bad soil we amended it really really well like the entire flower bed before we ever planted the dahlia tubers last year it was our plan to leave them here and to see how they do and then we are going to expand the garden so i was like well i'll dig them up because we were going to completely rework it y'all life happened and that just didn't work so i was like oh are the dahlias okay? I check them periodically throughout the winter and I wanna show you, I literally just dug this one up. You can see my dirty fingers, but look. So here we have the dahlia. Look, there is the tuber, nice and hard. So they did not rot, yay, praise the Lord. I mean, like, there we go. So this one is, and all the other ones that I have checked are doing really, really well. So what we're going to do is expand this because um, once you see your dahlias blooming, then you get uh, dahlia fever, shall we say. And I had probably too good of a time ordering dahlias. I did Swan Island and then I did Brex also. Swan Island is coming today. So that is what I'm going to share with you today and show you all those beautiful tubers, those flowers that are going to happen. Brex will be, it's on the way, but it's going to be a little while. And so what we're going to do the plan is is that the new dahlias are going to go to, on the right side of the flower beds because Laura's dahlias no this is left sorry Laura's dahlias are on the right the new tubers will go on the left and that will be the same for all three flower beds what we're going to do really soon is come in here and eliminate all of the grass between these beds and those will become flower beds themselves so this is going to be a whole cut flower garden even the grass right here where Brenna is all of this will turn into mulch not necessarily a um, a flower bed because this is a great access point for us to get the mower around the machines around that kind of thing but we're going to eliminate the grass because it's just a pain to mow and then your flower beds get all messy and everything in the new beds that we create that will be my sunflowers my zinnias my cosmos any of those other flowering annuals that i really want to have in the cut flower garden because last year i planted them on the other side of the of the dahlias and for the most part it they did not go well together i did not realize how big and vigorous the dahlias needed to be and my other plants kind of took over a little bit so that was part of the struggle last year so we're going to keep the three beds just dahlias it will also make it a little bit easier to maintain as far as maintenance like we'll never 
I mean, no, these are dahlia beds. Never go in there and use like a tiller <laughs> to get weeds out. These beds here that will have those annual cut flowers, we could take the tiller in there and till everything up. So that just makes it a little bit easier. So that is the plan for the dahlias. Cannot wait for the uh, shipment to come, supposed to come by the post office. That could be any time during the day, really. And so lots of fun things happening. I was looking back last night um, at my names of the tubers, like the dahlias, and then looking them up and I'm like, oh. So it is gorgeous, so much fun. And um, so as soon as it gets here, we're gonna open up the box and I'm gonna share with you all of those gorgeous dahlias that are gonna be growing in the garden this year. All right, my friends. So clearly we're in a different day, a different location. Um, so the dahlias did come the day that I originally filmed that. So that would have been, uh, I don't even know, it was last week. Today is Monday, first day of spring, so yay for that. Uh, but the, the dahlias arrived late in the afternoon and by then the opportunity to film had already passed. But good news is I got both of my orders of dahlias, one from Brex and then one from Swan Island dahlias. What I'm going to do today is I am going to run through the 36 different varieties of dahlias that have arrived that I'm going to be adding to the garden this year. This is just a very quick overview of the 36. I am not going into in depth. I am going to throw you up a picture so you can see what it is. And I'm going to give you the basic information on it. That way we can just kind of fly through and just all enjoy and cherish these gorgeous flowers just for a moment. I had the most fun. I made a spreadsheet. So that's why I have my computer here because there's no way that I'm going to remember 36 different dahlias and all their specifications. So without further ado, let's get ready to be inspired. If you want more information, you can either go to Brex or Swan Island. I will tell you who comes from what. We're going to do Brex first and then we will go into Swan Island. Gorgeous dahlias. I know when I was doing my research that they both have some dahlias still available for this spring shipping. So if you're interested, you can check out their websites and see what they have available. I know that I placed this order for these two orders in early September of last year. That was right kind of when the dahlias were really in the height here. I was very inspired. So I went to their website and even at that point, some of theirs were sold out. So just a little FYI. All right going into the first one all of these are from brex so if you want more information go to brex.com uh, the first one is rocco it is a palm pond style it is going to be a deep rich rich purple and it's gonna be a nice little tiny petite one the bloom size is only an inch and a half in diameter and then your plant is three and a half feet tall so this will be great for a garden accent you can actually put it into like a flower bed because you're probably not going to have to stake it and it makes an excellent cut flower. Next, we have the Joey Linda. The Joey is a series, and so we have Linda. It is a giant ball, and it is a vivid orange. It is going to be a nice, good size one. The bloom will be five and a half inches in diameter, but the plant is gonna be very manageable. Again, three and a half feet tall. Then, because those joeys were just so beautiful, I went ahead and did the festive joey mixture. These will all be giant balls. They're going to be of various different mixtures of the joey series that they put in there. So you're going to have a whole range of colors on them. It is a beautiful medley of plants, fully double blooms, and it is gorgeous planted just, you know, together as a group. So if you're just getting into dahlias and you're not sure because it can be very overwhelming, I would highly encourage you to pick out some of these mixtures. I actually have two different mixtures, one from Brex and then one from Swan Island. It just makes the guessing, just takes all the guesswork out of it. Then we go into Dark Spirit. Dark Spirit is a ball style dahlia and it is a beautiful rich velvet red. And it's gonna have three inch blooms on a three foot plant. The flowers are nearly black. So it adds a lot of drama to your garden and a lot of interest. So if you like those moody colors, then Dark Spirit could be one for you. Then we have on the opposite end of that spectrum, we have Boom Boom White. <laughs> Some of these names are just fantastic. I'm just gonna say that. And it is a giant ball and it is a beautiful clear white with four and a half inch blooms on it on a three foot plant. So the boom, boom, white. 
Then we're going into Bantling. And Bantling is going to be another pond pond. It is a beautiful orange, two inches wide on a three foot plant. When you have those pond ponds, they're just nice and tight. Um, the dahlias that Laura gave me last year had a couple of those in there and I love them because they are just a really unique bloom to them so nice and so tight and just have really fun colors and and just interest to them so i really enjoyed um, those so hence that's why i kind of stocked up on some of those cute little pon pons with that we also have genova and genova is going to be more of a ball type style but it is a white and lilac purple it is stunning. They're all stunning. I know I'm gonna say that over and over again, so just forgive me. It is going to be three inches on the bloom, and it's the plant is gonna be 28 inches. So again, it is another great one that you don't have to stake. It's not gonna be like a five foot dahlia, because I do have some of those. So you can work it into existing beds and just pop them in here and there. You don't have to dedicate a whole entire um, garden to staking them. And then we have Joey Winnie. Joey Winnie is another giant ball, but a beautiful soft, soft pink. It is going to be four inches in diameter and the plant is three and a half feet tall. So all of those that I got from Brex would be very easy to, you know, work into your existing flower beds. If you just want to pop them in there, if you want to try dahlias, go with those little shorter plants, those stockier plants, because it'll just be um, easily worked in and you're not going to have to stake them and enjoy them. So those are all of the ones from Brex. And then we're going to move into the ones um, from Swan Island. So everything that I tell you now is going to be from Swan Island. So we have got Amber Queen and Amber Queen is another pon pon. It is going to be a beautiful bronze color, only two inches in diameter and a four foot plant. And it is a very early and very prolific bloomer. So it will start blooming at 75 days. I have one in here that is a late bloomer and it's 120 days. So the difference between a 75 day and 120 day, I mean, that's, that's a good bit of time there y'all. And so if you can choose your dahlias to have some early, mid and late bloomers, because once they start blooming and you're cutting them, the more you cut on them, the more they bloom. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're thinking about picking up some, uh, some different dahlias. Honestly though, I probably didn't even recognize that. I just saw the flower and I loved it. And so that's why I got it. Then we have American Beauty. And American Beauty is gonna be considered an informal decorative style of a dahlia. It is a deep velvet red, eight inches in diameter. It is huge. Eight inches in diameter, so on a four foot plant. But the great thing about the American Beauty is that it's a very upright grower because some dahlias can tend to to want to tend to spread out or go to the side. So it's very upright and it has really nice strong stems, which if it has an eight inch bloom, then that is going to be a really important aspect on that. So that is American Beauty. <laughs> and then I love this one, Beats Me. So Beats Me, like the root vegetable, a beet, you can see where it gets its name because of that gorgeous magenta color. This is gonna be a formal decorative uh, style and they're gonna have five inch blooms on a four foot plant. Again, a nice sturdy plant is an excellent cut flower and as its name suggests, it is the perfect beet color. Now this one I had to choose just because of the name. This is Betty Ann. So my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, her name was Betty. My mama's name is Ann. So here I have Betty Ann, best of both ladies in my life. Um, it is a pon pon style and a nice deep pink, only a one and a half inch bloom on a three and a half foot plant. And again, this is another very early and very prolific bloomer. So I'm starting to get some nice early color in there. Next, we have Blackberry Ice, gorgeous one, another formal decorative, and it has various shades of purple in it. It's gonna have a four and a half inch bloom, four foot plant, and the blooms, have, I'm making sure I read this so I get this right. Blooms have a base color of soft pale lavender with a deeper purple in the center. You can see where it gets its name, right? Blackberry Ice because of all those different shades in there. Gorgeous, gorgeous plant. 
another great name, blah, blah, blah. Now I think of like when somebody says blah, 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 like that's not really like a positive thing. They're kind of being a little sassy. Well, I love this dahlia. It is a formal decorative, unusual golden beige color, five inch bloom. So a nice big bloom on a four and a half foot plant very rare unique color and the great thing about blah 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 is that it's going to go well with almost any other color in your garden so it's not whether if you like hot colors cool colors warm colors it doesn't matter the um, blah 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 is going to go with it really well next we have boogie nights boogie nights is a formal decorative and a true deep purple is this not the prettiest color I just think it's fantastic. A five inch bloom on a four and a half foot plant, superb color, and this is fantastic for arrangements because if you're gonna have dahlias, the great thing about dahlias is the more you cut them, the more they flower. So it is best to go out there and cut to your little heart's content and bring these beautiful blooms inside. If you have too many blooms, give them away. If you have like your hairdresser, your doctor, your dentist, uh, the, the, your mail lady, your trash folks, whoever is in your life, your neighbors, right? Give these things away. I promise it will uh, brighten their day and you're just going to get more and more blooms. So when you have that Boogie Nights, it is going to go really, really well in arrangements and with other colors. Next we have Cheers. Cheers is an informal decorative and it is a beautiful coral watermelon color. Three inches wide on it on a five foot plant. So this is one of those that's going to be a very big plant. It says Swan Island. I like how they word this. It makes it sound like it's a really positive thing, which it is. Lush foliage. That means it's going to have a lot of pretty foliage to it. A strong grower at five feet tall. I sure hope so. Dark stems, which is that'll be really fun. And then it's great for cutting. So you've got that coral watermelon of the flower and the petals on it with a nice dark stem. Sounds good to me. And then daddy's girl. I am a daddy's girl. And this is an informal decorative, very delicate, pale pink and white. This would be, oh, can you imagine like if you were having a baby shower and your friend was having like a little girl, how gorgeous these would be in there. Oh, beautiful. Four and a half inch bloom on it on a four foot plant really strong grower and it's loaded with stems for cutting that is what we like to hear when we're talking about our dahlias next another fun name foxy lady foxy lady is a formal decorative and comes in its various shades of pink on there it's going to be a three and a half inch bloom on a four foot plant and so this one is really cool so it has dusty rose with a cream yellow highlights and then a deeper rose mauve reverse so that just means you have a color on one side of the petal and then a different color on the back. So same leaf of the flower, but you've got a color on top and a color on bottom. It's two-toned. Really just gorgeous. Now, this is where I did my other um, collection with Swan Island. I did the Gardener's Choice Collection. And I thought this would just be fun because you can get things... Um, you know why not just go ahead and plus when you do a collection you get a better discount so like you can get as opposed to if you had bought them individually when they put them in a collection it works for you so you're gonna have various colors various styles of dahlias in here various colors heights shapes you name it um, and so this was this is what it says it says bundles of blooms with gorgeous plants for any yard or garden great color and bloom selection so really fun again if you're just starting out I would encourage you instead of being overwhelmed and not knowing what to get go for those collections or those mixes that would be a great way to do it honeydew so honeydew and it's written like the um the fruit, right? Not like a honey do list. This is a formal decorative and it is a honey buff color. Seven inch bloom on this thing. So nice and big on a four foot plant, heavy foliage. And this is really neat. This will occasionally have a red petal 
or a full red bloom, but the whole plant will not revert to red. So sometimes when you have these hybrids and they're crossing, you will have a little bit what they call unstable plant or an unstable flower, meaning that every single flower does not look the exact same. So that is what honeydew is. I personally think that is really fun where you get a little bit, maybe a little splotch of red in there or that occasional random red flower. But that honeydew is just an absolutely gorgeous one. And then I am a North Carolina girl and I have grown up in the South. I've been here my entire life. And here in the South, we do enjoy our iced tea, especially our iced sweet tea. So I got iced tea dahlia. This is a formal decorative. It is a beautiful amber orange. It is a three inch bloom on a three and a half foot plant. Nice compact habit, good stems, good for arrangements. So when it says a compact habit, again, that means I can put it in just a, not a random flower bed, but you know what I mean. It doesn't have to go in the dahlia bed. It can, I can mix it into the cottage garden or the backyard beds behind me. So you can mix them in. So I love that iced tea. Then we have hot rod. Now hot rod is actually considered a water lily style. We have not talked about a water lily, but you can see the difference on the bloom on that. It is a beautiful deep orange at a five inch bloom, another good size on a four foot plant. And according to Swan Island, this is an absolute must have for arrangements and it has nice long stems. So you, you don't have the little short stems, you can have nice long stems. And with that beautiful deep orange, you know, I am kind of partial to, to orange colors, you know, go Tigers. And so I love that. Next we had Lambreth. I know I'm probably saying that wrong. Y'all can correct me. Informal decorative. It is a beautiful deep peach and pink, a seven inch bloom on this thing four foot tall plant and it is, I like how they describe this. It is very reminiscent of Cafe Ole, but it has deeper, richer colors. So I know so many people love that Cafe Ole. This is very similar to that. I actually have it in the garden. Laura gave me some, but this is gonna be a deeper, richer color on that. Then we have Mount Hood. So if you are from the Pacific Northwest, I can almost guarantee that you know what color Mount Hood is gonna be. Uh, Mount Hood is a formal decorative dahlia that is a pure white. Mount Hood, of course, is a mountain in Oregon that has uh, snow covered over it. Most of the, I guess, definitely the winter, and then a lot of times even in this like spring and summer, I think at the very top elevations, Pure, obviously nice and white. There is actually a daffodil too that's called Mount Hood. There's probably a tulip. There's a lot of Mount Hoods out there, but this is the dahlia, a pure white five inch bloom on a four foot plant. They say it's the perfect cut flower and of course named after Mount Hood in Oregon. Next we have Rasmataz. Rasmataz is a formal decorative with yellow raspberry red colors. Two and a half inch bloom, so a little bit on the smaller side but the plant is smaller, a three and a half foot plant. And this is gonna be really fun because it's blooms of yellow blending to raspberry red and it creates a very striking combination. I tend to like all those kind of those bold colors, those really fun colors, those different ones. So Rasmataz is gonna fit in quite nicely. North Carolina girl here, our Southern Bells. We do enjoy our Southern Bells. So here we have the Southern Bell Dahlia. It is an informal decorative, which is a beautiful dusty coral pink. A five inch bloom, so nice size, four and a half foot plant. And this is gorgeous for arrangements. So this was another great one to choose for your arrangements. Then we have Sun Kissed. Yes, guess what color Sun Kissed is? That's right, a soft clear yellow. It is a formal decorative style, five inch bloom, four and a half foot plant. And it says it complements almost any color that it's paired with. So this Sun Kissed and then the beige one, oh, well, who was that? Um, up, up farther up we went where it talked about that um, how it just blends just about with any of those colors. So that's a really fun one, that sun kissed. And then Tiny Treasure. Tiny Treasure is a pon pon. It is a pure white, two and a half inch bloom, a three and a half foot plant, very nice stocky compact grower and is great for the garden. Another wonderful one. I love, like I said, I love those little pon pons. Can you tell that? I'm getting a bunch of those. Next we have Appealing. Appealing is a formal decorative soft yellow, 
seven inch blooms. So nice blooms on that. Four and a half foot plant, excellent cut flower. And then we have, and I say last but not least, it's not the last one, but you'll understand why I say this. Harvest Moonlight. So Harvest Moonlight is a beautiful, rich yellow. This is the one that I was telling you about that's a really late bloomer. So it's 120 days, but because it's called Harvest Moon, it is mostly going to bloom, like start blooming in late summer, early fall. And they called it that because it reminds them of the September full moon. So that's right around that time that this one's going to start blooming. 10 inch flowers. I, I can't even imagine a 10 inch flower. This is going to be fantastic on a four and a half foot plant. So really nice. Now, the reason I say that's the last one is because that was the last one that I purchased. Then the great thing about Swan Island is they'll give you free dahlias. I guess like based on how many you bought, then they give you, you get to choose some free ones. So all these last ones that I'm getting ready to tell you, I got for free. So we all love free plants. Um, gets crazy. Uh, gets is G-I-T-T-S. Gets crazy. It is a stellar style. It is a golden bronze with rosy purple reverse. So again, that two-tone effect on it. A seven-inch bloom on a five and a half foot plant. So I think this is going to be my tallest plant at five and a half feet. And this was actually the award winning in 2011 from the American Dahlia Society. So this is a great one to have. So if you can get your hands on it, hopefully this will, hopefully this will live up to its name. Then we have Daydreamer. Daydreamer is a water lily style. Soft yellow blends to a soft apricot. So lots of really beautiful colors on this. Four inch bloom, four foot plant great for arrangements or cut flowers with nice strong sturdy stems then we have vanti this is a ball style dahlia which is a nice rich dark purple four inch blooms on a three and a half foot plant very upright growing long lasting blooms and it does really well in arrangements so we like that one to be in the arrangements bride to be guess what color that's right pure white it is another water lily style a four inch bloom on a three and a half foot plant compact grower long lasting cut flower and then peach fuzz here in the south we love our peach trees and we love our peaches so we have peach fuzz now you can tell that this has a different look because i didn't get any of these so guess what i get to get next year all right, that's right. This is a semi cactus style. So you can tell it has a completely different, like the petals are shaped very different. Obviously, it's going to be a soft peach color, three inch blooms on a four foot plant, blooms profusely. That is what we like to hear. Dark stem with dark foliage. Those are the 36 different varieties that we will be adding into the garden here in the next couple of days. The great thing about Swan Island and Brex is they tell you exactly like how to take care of the dahlias. Swan Island, I found, I haven't explored Brex as much, so I'm not saying this against Brex. I'm just saying I have looked on Swan Island. They give you great information on how to plant them, how to care for them, how to water them, how to weed them, what you can expect in the spring, summer, and fall. So there's tons of information on that website about how to even just care for your plants, which I think is so vitally important. So check out both of those websites. I'll probably be getting them into the ground um, this week because they said it was okay as long as you keep them in a cool, dry spot where it's not freezing and they stay in their peat moss because they packed them in peat that they will be fine. So of course, when I do plant them, I will share that with you so you can see the different, um, just like kind of a comparison between the two different companies, right? How they package them, how they label them, the different size of the tubers, those kinds of things. So of course, I will take you along for the ride. The good Lord willing, it will get done this week because I want to get them in the ground. In fact, Randy is helping me today and she is over there weeding the rest of the dahlia bed. Bless her heart. So I'm going to hop off here and go help her and we're going to finish that up. That way these sweet babies can get into the ground. Hope this has been fun. Hope you've had a little bit of enjoyment seeing all those beautiful colors. I know I had fun when I was going back and taking my notes because I had kind of forgotten what everybody looked like and it sure is exciting and it's like, oh, come on warm weather. I'm ready for you. So as always, thanks for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.